Welcome to our wrap up for Foundations and Applications of Humanities Analytics. Um, just to recap what we've done on this course, you know, we started with this introduction to humanities analytics using three different examples of humanities analytics projects. We then talked about this notion of excellence in the humanities and the sciences and what it means for a project to be excellent. And that sort of found, um, found a place at the heart of this course that sort of stayed through throughout the, uh, the nine uh, lectures as well as the guest lectures. What makes a project excellent? What makes a finding excellent? What makes a piece of work excellent? It's this sort of deep aesthetic, philosophical, but also computational question that was really at the heart of everything we were interested in. We then address this other core issue that sort of uh, weaved a thread throughout the whole course, which is what, uh, what makes for a good research question in humanities analytics. And I think so much of both the guest lectures and subsequent lectures that we did were really concerned with trying to illustrate examples of good and not so good research questions so that in your own work, you can sort of launch projects that address important research questions. We talked about pattern recognition, which is this crucial concept, both in sort of any kind of computational science, but also in sort of classic humanities scholarship. And we sort of talked about patterns from both the sort of computational and humanities perspective, but also from this philosophical perspective, thinking critically about what even is a pattern and what kinds of things patterns do in the world. We then took a two week deep dive into a model research project using newspaper archives to investigate the changes in the relationship between capitalism and democracy over time. We sort of showed you the ways in which one could start gathering data to address that kind of research question. Uh, and we walked you through some initial visualization of the quantitative results of that kind of data gathering while also situating it in a sort of uh, historically grounded uh, humanities enriched uh, context. We then took a more sort of philosophical turn as I started doing more of the lectures and took this uh, deep dive into sort of the philosophical and historical perspectives on measurement and probability, two core concepts in the philosophy of science and especially core concepts in the application of philosophy of science and epistemological ideas uh, in order to build a sort of new epistemology for this sort of new academic discipline really that is humanities analytics. And finally, we sort of walked you through two projects in humanities analytics, including some code and some further visualization. Um, this was my project on feminist, uh, feminist philosophical linkages and Simon's project going back in and looking at types of readers on uh, Goodreads and also on blurbs. Um, along the way, you completed assignments, you did peer reviews, you listened to guest lectures. And I just want to thank all of you so much. It really made such a difference. Um, I also want to thank Simon, Carrie, Zachary, all my colleagues for making this course possible, for making this course, I feel, a success. All of the guest lecturers for really bringing in some excellent contributions and really diversifying uh, the voices that we were able to include in this online course and also the perspectives we were able to give to all of you as students in the online course. And finally, but certainly uh, not least importantly, I want to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, in particular their Office of Digital Humanities, for the funding that made this online course possible. So what can we do going forward? What can each of you do going forward if you're still interested in this material, if you don't want to sort of end your humanities analytics journey here? Well, the first thing you can do is take the exit survey, right? We have a survey that's available on the course website. We want to hear from you. We want to know how we can make this course better. It's an opportunity to help future students. It's also an opportunity for you to sort of vent any frustrations that you might have. I feel this course was a success, but I do not think it was perfect by any stretch, and we want to know those ways in which we came up short so that we can improve for the next time. I encourage all of you, especially those who, can, who completed the course, to consider applying to the in-person summer school. That's going to be taking place in July of this year. Hopefully, it'll be in person. There's an application available on the Santa Fe Institute website. I'd encourage each of you to consider applying. Think about whether that's something you'd like to do. There'll be an opportunity to get together in person workshops and projects really delve into different ways of getting involved and launching a research career really in the humanities analytics. So I'd strongly encourage uh, each of you, especially those who've completed the course, to go ahead and do that. If you teach 
at any level and you feel that these materials would be useful in your own teaching, use them. If there's something you're having trouble getting access to, get in touch with us. We want this to sort of spread far and wide. And so if you, if you wanna use this material, um, go for it if you have access to it. If for some reason there's an issue with access, just let us know. We want this material out there in the world. Um, and finally, from a some more technical coding perspective, we'll put some links up to some resources for getting started more with uh, natural language processing, other kinds of humanities analytics techniques in Python. Um, but I would also encourage all of you, you know, the way I learned how to start doing some of these things is just by having a project I was interested in and using Google and using other resources to see, okay, how can I make this happen, right? So if there's something you're interested in, don't be intimidated by the coding. There's a lot of resources available to help you implement the project that you're interested in and address the research question that you're interested in. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank all, I thank all of you so much for your attention. Um, it's just been, you know, an incredible experience over this semester, um, and we hope it's one that will continue. And finally, if you enjoyed this course and you have colleagues, friends, whoever that you think would enjoy this course, let them know. Tell your friends. Spread the word. We want this to keep going for years to come. So thank you very much for a wonderful semester, and I'll be signing out for now. Thank you.